Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Commander Ramsey. I've turned up my volume on my microphone this time. Hopefully uh, it will uh, do better in the game. In this game I have the Tier 8 uh, Japanese CV, the Kaga, actually in the Black Edition. She looks quite slick. She's a very powerful T8 carrier with a large assortment of planes and uh, great torpedo bombers. You lay down four torpedoes every strike, which are very useful. In this battle, I'm going to concentrate on the destroyers in the game and the two cap zones. I know they're probably going to split and uh, try to attack each cap zone that's available. So I'm going to head out here to the sea cap first and try to spot for my team and see what I come up with. I probably should have saved some planes on this first strike. As you'll see, I get bushwhacked. But uh, I'm a little rusty. And I'm an average CV player, not the best. Here the uh, enemy CV has already dropped off his uh, fighter plane back at the uh, B cap. And I know he's not going to drop another one, but I notice that he's flying close to the cap, and I say, oh, you're protecting a DD. So that kind of gave me a clue, and right away there was the Shimakaze. I wasn't afraid of his AA, but uh, the other ships that got involved here uh, did surprise me a little bit. One thing about uh, CVs, you don't get much notice. I mean, uh, Wargaming has it adjusted where you're almost on top of these guys uh, to give them a chance, I guess, at their AA. In real life, uh, on a clear day like this, uh, being from the air, you would spot them long before they could fire on you. But uh, it's the game, so you deal with it. So uh, I go back immediately, persistently, with my torpedoes, because I know he's going to try to cap. And I know he'll probably smoke up. So uh, torpedoes are my best uh, avenue here to try and flush him out. The enemy uh, CV player begins to attack me directly. Uh, trying to get on my nerves, which he doesn't. I know my best choice is to follow my battleships at a reasonable distance. Uh, one thing I've noticed in the replays, you can't tell where I'm sending my carrier. You hear the dings, but you don't see my path. Here I'm trying to flush him out of the cap zone by launching my four torpedoes. Try to use a top tier method here of coming swinging back around 90 degrees. 90 degrees. And uh, to try to get him caught figured out there I can't do it so I don't launch more I uh, don't launch my torpedoes I swing back around and uh, send the division back in again this time uh, to try to get uh, a 90 degree uh, shot because I know he's facing due north and actually due southeast uh, and northwest all right he's uh, being brave here trying to cap backwards I see him and as you'll see, I land one torpedo on him. Not a lot of damage, but uh, sends a message to him. And uh, I swing back around. I'm not going to give up because I have plenty of uh, torpedoes here. So I send out another uh, division of the squadron. My goal here is to prevent him from capping. The other team's already capped uh, B, I believe it is. Uh, if I can get him out of here, that will give us a chance with our overwhelming ship majority here to, to try to take the cap. Land another hit on him. Get a defended ribbon. So he's trying to cap again. Come back in again for a 90 degree shot. Right here, I think uh, the Shimakaze has had enough and he starts to exit the cap zone, which is great. I had a golden opportunity here to uh, get a 90 degree shot on him, but I just didn't lead him far enough. He was taking off apparently. May have been using his speed boost, I don't know. 
but these torpedoes on the IGN planes are very fast. I should have given a little more lead, but I missed him there. But it does uh, keep the cap free for us. The enemy team has taken the lead. I'm a, I uh, am up against the uh, Soviet uh, Tier 8 carrier, which is a very strong carrier. But my focus and my mission is still to help my team spot the cap zones and to uh, take out any ships that are getting near the cap zone if I can. Here the Otago is uh, braving it. I had a good shot on him, but he turned at the last minute, and I still thought I had a good shot in the reticle, but uh, when you're shooting long ways, uh, it's a pot shot to hit with one of those rockets, and uh, just don't get him. So right now my damage is uh, not looking that impressive after six minutes, but it gets better, and it's primarily due to the fact I'm spending more time trying to protect the cap zone than trying to get points. I'm going to help my team to try to get the victory. I'm trying to help my clan in naval battle, which uh, really focuses most of the time on XP. So to do that, you've got to win the battle. Here, swing in using a top tier method. He's essentially my coach. I watch his videos all the time. He's the best CV player I know. And I'm using his tactics coming over islands, uh, the 90 degree uh, cross shot on torpedoes, uh, I borrowed that from him. Come in again for another hit on the Talon. Get one bomb on him and my friendlies take him out so he's out. You notice I'm continuing to move uh, back behind my front line here keeping my uh, detection radius about the bowels of the front of my uh, friendly ships. That's to protect me uh, from other ships. And uh, had there been a uh, submarine in the game, it would have helped that way, even though it's not perfect, because submarines, good sub players, have been known to go underneath the front line ships and pop up on the other side and obliterate the carrier so here I go to kind of help spot a little bit to see what teams uh, I mean what ships are over there near that cap zone but I think they're preventing my uh, T-10 cruiser Russian cruiser from capping but I also see uh, another ship pulling up to cause mischief Tier 9 Soviet battleship, so I take some torpedo shots on him to try to get him out of the way. Here, I swing around to get him again. I land four on him there, which really helps. Soviet battleships are tough. Normally, here I wouldn't stick around, uh, but I thought, hey, I'll be able to get one more on him. So I swing around not to waste a trip. he may hit the uh, repair party. You know, those Russian battleships have great repair parties. All right, back to the carrier again. This time I'm going to head off uh, in the direction of uh, where the destroyers are. We've got to take this cap zone because uh, we're behind. Even though we're one ship ahead, So I'm still trying to assist my team taking the sea cap. It's been very difficult to take and we're almost halfway through the battle. Here I line up to try to take down the Massachusetts but our, uh, our friendlies here on the team are doing a good job taking him out. Notice I find out after I've already made my dive for the torpedoes. They take him out. Fortunately I see the Otago there so I move on take a long distance torpedo shot the best I could before my time expired. Luckily I get a shot 
uh, one torpedo to hit on him. Here I try to do the 90 degree cross shot, but he turns rapidly trying to avoid. And uh, I thought I had him there, but he must have really turned sharp. So kudos to him. So back to uh, the dive bombers, and I head off in the direction of the uh, additional cap zone we want to take. I believe that's uh, D. It's hard for me to see. I have eye problems amongst other neurological issues, so it is what it is. So the French battleship here looks like he's a prime target for a dive bomb attack. Quoting from the battle midway, I know I've got a target. I'm going to go after it. I try to get up the bomb before I get too close and they obliterate the rest of the bombers. I knew he was kind of by himself, so I didn't uh, drop any planes early to save them. This allowed me to swing back around and hit him again. Top tier, uh, he sets his uh, dive bombing out pretty far from the ship, which I've started doing that. It's really tricky. You have to time it so you don't run out of time. And I would recommend practicing in co-op a lot on your drops. Uh, a little easier, but uh, you can move over to random when you think you've gotten fairly good enough at it. The torpedo planes. Uh, Utilizing the uh, islands as cover, you can swing around them and start your dive sometimes before you even uh, get to the top of the island. That frees up planes to go up high above and not be subject to target by the enemy team, therefore conserving planes. Here I wasn't sure if I was going to go after the Masashi or the Otago. I knew the Masashi was going to create problems for my Petro there at the decap, so at the last minute I thought, well, I better work on him. So I'll go after him with my torpedoes. Uh, him being by himself, I'll try to get in a double drop here, a 90 degree turn and drop again. But he sends up his uh, destroyer, I mean, uh, uh, fighter planes after me. I've learned to dive immediately when I hear the fighter planes and probably more than 50% of the time you can save two or three of your planes. I come back and I have to do a long distance shot. It's a Hail Mary. But it was better than just giving up and wasting a trip. And I get one in there on the Masashi. Too bad I didn't get a flood going. All right. I know the uh, both enemy DDs are alive. We lost our uh, Fletcher early in the contest, which made it difficult for us. We're still behind. We still have a one ship advantage. Here was a long distance dive attempt on the Otago. and I get one bomb in there on him. I thought he was going to be dead. I thought my friendlies were going to take him out, but he apparently hits his uh, heel and starts building himself back up, so I go back in for another bombing run. And I get him. Sometimes luck is on your side. But the good thing is, as a team, we took him out. That's what's most important. Now we're free to try to move in on the B cap. But the danger point is they still have both of their destroyers. And I can remind the team about that. Even though it's Shimakaze's on the back side, he can very deadly and can still launch an enormous amount of heavy hitting torpedoes. I start to swing over to go after the Shimakaze, but our friendly asks for help on the Neptune. So I swing around to that. 
Neptune's one of those light British uh, uh, cruisers that are glass cannons. They're very deadly, but they don't take very much punishment. So they took him out. So I always try to praise that my team I'm on. Nobody wants to hear complaining. So uh, I head off over the mountain top here, the island top, to try to go after these destroyers. My friendlies take out the Shimakaze. So the uh, Ostergotland, Ostergotland is uh, there. I launch my torpedoes, try the old 90 degree mover, and swing around as hard as I can. It's going to be a Hail Mary shot, but uh, I do my best, swing as hard as I can, launch my torpedoes at the last second. He gets injured, I think, a little bit there, and I get one torpedo, believe it or not, I take him out. What a luck shot, but I'll take it. And I get a compliment from the enemy team, which, that's really rare. Uh, I was tickled I got the kill for my team, but I appreciated the compliment. I, I don't like it when people run down their CV players. So few people want to play them nowadays anyway because they're really difficult to play compared to the other ship classes. So uh, if you complain a lot about your CV player, I'd recommend you trying to play CVs. I give uh, my coach top tier uh, accolades here. Uh, he's greatly improved my game by watching his videos and listening and watching his tactics. Uh, I'll probably never be a top tier player. I've got uh, several neurological problems and disease I'm dealing with and I don't play very good most of the time but I'm trying. Here I thought I'd go off after the, the remaining ship but they took him out and uh, I go out here to try to swing uh, toward the uh, CV but uh, I had some kind of uh, graphics issue here at the very last part of the game and for some reason uh, my planes weren't responding and so I couldn't turn when I wanted yes that was my fault in the text box <laughs> there's those neurological issues for you but anyway I head off over here to try to at least spot the uh, CV for my team but they're already seeing him thanks to our cruiser so I'm gonna just idle in here and give my team the chance to blow him apart I don't need another kill we're gonna get the win anyway thanks for watching my video at the end here I'll have the uh, commander skill build and uh, other information about the battle so please stay tuned The uh, Taga uh, Black I won in a box, believe it or not. I had the Kaga before, but I won the, uh, the blacked out version. Sorry I didn't save all the details. I had to utilize the uh, not so great uh, uh, WOWS uh, data page, which doesn't give you much data, but here's just kind of summary of how the battle went. Um, I think in the battle I came in third, which was not bad for a T8 carrier in a T10 game. And uh, I was just happy we won, and I was happy with the way I played. Uh, anyway, the uh, commander skill build is here at the end, and uh, I think you'll appreciate that. It's nothing grandiose. I don't have any uh, unique uh, commander on it but I always like to show the commander skills uh, to the ship I'm playing and also show uh, the uh, economic bonuses I always try to ramp those up to get better commander skills here's the equipment uh, the ship build nothing surprising but I like to show it the torpedo bombers modification is important because you spend a lot of time using the torpedo bombers uh, to uh, to the Kaga it's benefit because that's where its strength lies. Uh, the bombs are good and, and the rocket planes are so-so but the uh, torpedoes are really good. You get a lot of them, a lot of planes and you can do some good damage and you can harass uh, 
destroyers as you saw in this video. There's my economic bonuses, the uh, 865 on the Commander XP. Here's the uh, signal flags, which for me, I try to utilize them to the best of my ability to give myself every advantage, which I need. And finally, here's the uh, commander skills. Cooling consumable. Prep time minus 5%. I find this useful when uh, you're trying to win a game and drop an extra uh, patrol fighters. Site stabilization, very important. And these three down here are pretty much standard for just about every CV that you play. Once again, thanks for tuning in. This is Commander Ramsey. Uh, hope you enjoyed the CV video. Happy New Year and may God bless you in all your endeavors. Until next time, 07 Salute.